A very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClue. It is, of course, Sunday night. Nothing gets past me. And we are live on Facebook Live, the world's top platform for broadcasting. Excellent to be with you tonight, and I hope I find you well. Now then, you've probably heard the promo from this morning. For those of you who haven't, it's up on Facebook there. And also all the programs, all the Scotty McClue programs are uploaded onto YouTube. So you can see them on YouTube. Excellent to have you all with me tonight. We have lots and lots to talk about. We only have one hour, so little time it just passes in a flash. For those of you who've just switched on your Facebook and you've seen me for the first time, if you're from another planet, then you might be thinking, who on earth is this? What's going on on my Facebook? It's me. It's Scotty McClue. Jim Stephen Gibbs with us. John Gatons is with us. Craig Brown's watching. Julianne Scott's watching. Angie Thompson. Louis Faber. Will you be watching Super Bowl tonight? I'll see how it fits in with the program, Louis. Ian Walker's watching. Dinky do to you, Ian. George Mullins watching. Alex Duff's watching. David Lafferty, good evening Scotty, good evening Scotty, how are you this evening, says Jim Joplin, dinky do everybody, Dean Nelson, hello Scotty, D's in America, fantastic, Andy McCrory's watching, George Mullen, late again Scotty, no not at all George, your clock must be wrong, I go between the two clocks, I've got one at one minute past ten now, it was exactly at ten o'clock when I came on, and I've got one that's a little bit fast. Gary Moyer's watching, Chris Max watching, Chris Davis. Evening, sir, says Chris. Evening to you, sir, says McClure. Scotty, please can you remember Jeff Graham, a radio legend and special constable who sadly passed away yesterday. God bless him, says Paul Anthony. Absolutely, I do remember Jeff. He was my programmer in Lancashire at Red Rose Radio. And I remember Jeff well, and I remember his wife, and I remember Stanley, his son. And I send condolences and much love at this difficult time for them. Also, Richard Frediani is watching, our finest news editor in the country. Hiya, Scotty. Nice to see you again, says Elaine Costello. Charles McLaughlin, you're looking good, Scotty. I'm feeling very good, Charles. An excellent nick. Dinky doo, says Ghani Hussain from Sheffield in Yorkshire. Time for a share, 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 Scotty. Dinky doo, says James Stephen Gibbs. Sandra Johnston, hello, tell Robbie he needs to be nice to me. Yes, Sandra, absolutely. Julianne Scott, did you watch the rugby? Was that not fantastic? What a game and what a win. Wendy Garrett's watching Dinky Doo, Wendy. George Raffin's watching. Train Spotting 2. Any good, says Louis Faber. Haven't seen it yet, but I've got Train Spotting 1 and it was outstanding. I am, of course, a great fan of Ewan McGregor and Bobby Carlyle and all these guys. Malcolm Wilson's watching Dinky Doo. Give a shout out to the team at Indian Villa, Motherwell, says Mohammed Balal Salim. Yes, Mohammed Balal. Salim, peace be upon the Prophet Muhammad, I say, Scotty, smashy or nicey? Oh, well, here we go. This is a great song. Um, absolutely, the big fader being faded up. Angie uh, has just shared it. Thank you very much. Scotty, we make again, says Frank McConnell. Absolutely, Frank. Dinky do to you, I say. Aye, Wales did well in the rugby, says George. You've said done well. Wales is a singular George, so it would be did well. Sunderland winning 4-0 was better than the rugby, says Elaine Costello. Sunderland! Sunderland! Sorry, I'm shaking the camera there. Scotty, uh, did you watch the Celtic today? 5-2 and 27 points clear. Lol, never mind the rugby, says David Lafferty. He is celebrating the hoops. Cat Atkinson is watching. Dinky do to you, Cat. Lovely to hear from you. Julianne Scott, Scotland and Wales did well. Well spoken, Julie. Wendy says, uh, Wendy from Fortia Ventura says, Hi to all of you in Escocia. Escocia, yes. Tell Geraldine a lover seen Train Spotting 2 last night. Didn't enjoy it, says Stephen Harry. I wonder why. Captain, my captain, can't stay. I will get you on catch-up and on YouTube later, says George Raffin. Dinky-doo, George. Take care. Thanks, Scotty. You're a legend, says Mohammed. 
And um, Gary Hussein, of course, Gary's there. Say hi to my ex-boss, Angela Rice, says Sandra Johnson. Dinky do, ex-boss, Angela Rice. John Gittens, is it windy, Wendy? Brian J. Hemmings is watching. Dinky do to you, Brian J. Uh, Jim Stephen Gibb, tune the, the squeeze box would be appreciated. We will have that later for you, Jim, of course. Kath Haley uh, says Elaine Costello. Angie says rugby is better than footy because the players don't fall about kidding on their heart. Absolutely. Well, they used to say that uh, football was a, a gentleman's game played by hooligans and rugby was a hooligans game played by gentlemen. There you are. Ladies, of course, too, now. Uh, where's the holiday camp jacket, says George. You got that wrong, chummy. I have got two holiday camp jackets. So there you are. The last one was green, and the other one was navy blue, burgundy gold, and green. And somebody who's in the know would know the colours. So there you go. Get that one sorted, George. Uh, Scotty, Donald Trump threw his toys out the pram and the wee judge threw them back in. You can't make it up, says Ian Walker. You certainly can't, Ian. Jim Stephen Gibbs says, I've shared the video. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you. It's uh, SharePoint coming up at 15.30.45 as well as when it suits. Ties are nice colours, Scotty, says Elaine Costello. Now, I'll have to fess up. I'll have to step up to the plate. I was speaking at a dinner on uh, Friday night. Scotty McClue is not the cheapest after-dinner speaker, but he is, of course, the best, because I am the world's top broadcaster. So, quite a pull on the bill there when you've got Scotty McClue, if you'll pardon the pelicanism. And um, what was interesting is uh, when I came in, I thought I'll pop up and have a world, a, a, a word with the world. So that's what I did. I had, had a word with the world. Not easy to say if you're selling seashells on the seashore. It's uh, an Oxford jacket and it's a secret, says Angie Thompson. Well, Angie, you're kind of on the right tracks. Both the jackets were bought in Oxford just before I went to a concert in Blenheim. Uh, never mind dinghy, we should be saying hi de hi. Oh ho de ho, George. Giuseppe Bachetti, he's just joined us. Hello, Giuseppe. Bravo, bravissimo. Lovely to hear from you. See, si. right on, Scotty, says Elaine. Are you for Scottish independence, says Robert Riley Dowd, singer? I am indeed in as much as I'm no great flag waver or tub thumper or great nationalist or any of that. I'm not even a great politician. Uh, I'm actually apolitical. But common sense prevails. Scotland could manage absolutely fine on its own. And I was thinking tonight, the British Prime Minister's proper title is First Lord of the Treasury. So if I was the First Minister of Scotland, I would want to be made First Lord of the Treasury, First Lord of the Scottish Treasury, whatever what you want to do, and we will build up the Scottish Pound, sort out Scottish banking. Um, hello, Scotty McClure, says Jonathan Scott Donegan. Hello, Jonathan Scott Donegan, says Scotty McClure. Fiona Summers is watching to smack. Are you Trump's brother with a name like that? <laughs> I have fatty walking service, says Jim King. Thanks to your glorious ideas. Do you think I should start a pensioners outsourcing agency too, Scotty? Jim, it's a brilliant idea. People used to say, why are you attacking the fatties? Say, I'm not. I'm saving their lives by saying, knock the fatties door and invite them out for a walk. Right, uh, I'll make you king, Scotty, if you finance an army for the takeover. Finance an army, says Frank. Absolutely. Well, I'm financing Scotty McClue at the moment, and all of you can go on to GoFundMe. GoFundMe, put in the Scotty McClue show and stick in a quid or a fiver or a hundred quid or a million quid or whatever you've got. Jim Stephen Gibb, can you say hi to my daughter Jodie? First time watching Jodie Dinky Doo from Scotty McClue, I say. Welcome to the World's Top Talk Show, live on the World's Top Broadcast Platform, globally broadcasting on Facebook Live. Also, who have we got here? Wait till we see what's going on here. Is somebody Skyping? Is somebody Skyping in, I ask you. Evening, Scotty, says Esther Hart, and two kisses, 
two kisses to you, Hester. Uh, can you say hi to my daughter, Judy? We've just done that one. I used to think that rugby guys were picked because they were good at jumping high till I went to Murrayfield and saw a guy lifting a guy up to get to the ball. That's called a line-out, my dear. You put your big tall boys and they get the wee guy and hold him right up there and he grabs the ball and passes it out to his own side. So it's a line-out you're talking about there. You would see the, the linesman standing and then the referee has to come on, get that line-out back to the line. Stop shoving and jostling and pushing and all that sort of nonsense. Not allowed. Right. Ball in straight, please. Thank you. There you go. Scotty McClue was a tight head prop. And uh, I was a bit loose head as well, you know, but that wouldn't come as any surprise. That'll be the phone, says Elaine. Absolutely somebody that didn't know about the broadcasting. I think the union will soon be needing a new super duper vow. So the resurrection of old Brunosaurus. Google Eye from the old folks' homes, probably inevitable. So brace yourself, people. He's... What's this? The human should be in a super duper vow. So there we go. Um, all, probably inevitable to brace yourself. Uh, the Union will soon be needing a new super duper vow. So the resurrection of old Bruno Schurer's Google Eye from the old folks' homes, probably inevitable. Brace yourself, people. He is coming. I think if we have Indy too, never mind former Prime Ministers, Scotty McClue should make the speech, the big speech, and just give you the facts, and you can make up your own mind. Independence is not nationalism, it is common sense. Right, I will donate, Scotty, when I have some money available, says John Paul Preston. John Paul, please do not leave yourself short under any circumstances. Even a pound would be wonderful just to let me know that you care. My friend Kath Hilly should be joining us shortly. I've just told her how good you are, Scotty, says Elaine Costello. Well, of course, Elaine, I think what we've got here is the new television. And I was just, I shouldn't be, but I was just bemoaning the fact earlier that if I was even younger than I am now, there's so much could be done with, uh, with digital work. And we're looking into that. You know there's big, big meetings going on. I have to mwah, keep that sipped, of course. But I'm just itching to tell the world. Sandy Howden, Nicholas Dodgen does not know the interest rate on Dumfries' new hospital, says Sandy. Do you know the interest rate on Dumfries' new hospital, Sandy? Do tell, and I want the truth. Not that you wouldn't, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Anthony, hello, Mr. McClure. I used to listen to you on the tranny years ago. I recently found one of your CDs in the loft. I'm thinking of auctioning it on eBay. What should be my starting price? One million pounds. And you can put half a million into Scotty McClue's GoFundMe account. Uh, Frank McConnell, I'll give you all the gold in the world, Scotty, if you sell me your soul. No, we don't do that. I remember reading the late Ronald Selby Wright, the minister of the Canongate Church in Edinburgh, from 1936 to, I think, about 1976. And uh, well known with the Canongations in Edinburgh, of course. And uh, Ronnie Wright had seen Hitler's eagle's nest at Berchtesgaden after the Second World War, and he thought of the text, Come with me, said the devil, and I will show you all the kingdoms of the world. There you are. Uh, one P bid from me for that CD, says George Mullen. Thanks, George. One P bid. Any advance in one P2 over here, sir? Bids against you, George. Uh, hey, Scotty, Kath is a Sunderland supporter too. Sunderland! Sunderland! If you hate Newcastle, clap your hands. <laughs> only joking, only joking, magpies. Do not get annoyed with old McClure. You lot know what it's like. So there you are. Barbara Ann Haig is watching. 4 nil, 4 nil, says Elaine. At present, it's 180,000 on a total of 230,000. NPD replaced PFI. What you could do, Sandy, you could pull a fast one, you could break all the rules and just say, I'm sorry, but uh, the arrangement's finished. Well, take us to court if you want, but you'll not be getting your money. Uh, Scotty, what do you think about getting 20 pence back on all the plastic and glass? That's in general, Sandy, not in any particular 
BFI, I would say. Scotty, what do you think about getting 20 pence back on all the plastic and glass bottles? But add 20 pence at their sale, rec recycling sorted, and the Wains will have pocket money. Ian, I think that's an excellent idea. You take back your wee plastic bottle and you get yourself 20p, which has been added on to the purchase price of the drink. Kath Haley says, yay! Kiss, kiss. Robert Riley Dowd Sr., I'll pay two bob for the CD. Now, two bob, I'll translate for the younger generation, of which there are many watching, is 10p. Uh, so there we go, Robert Riley Dowd Sr., 10 pence, two shillings. Better selling it to Robert, George Mullen says. I'll buy it up myself, I think, for 10 pence. You can't uh, take them and you can't make them, says Ian Walker. That's true. There we are. We've had over 100 comments on YouTube, on YouTube, on Facebook uh, so far. So there you are. This will all be uploaded on YouTube. My brain was running ahead there. Good evening, Scotty. Hope you're well. It's my 26th birthday tomorrow, says Francis King. Francis, a very, very, very happy birthday from everybody watching on Facebook Live all round the globe for you for tomorrow. That's tremendous. And 26 is a very, very good age. I was thinking of getting married when I was 26 and I bought my first house when I was 26. I wish I'd kept it as well. Um, the old lady downstairs bought her for 800. I, I just said I'd give her a thousand without seeing round it. Um, so, Scotty, uh, you're at the dinghy do four posts and no mentions, says Mark Nickel. Mark, it's just going up so quickly. I do sincerely apologize. If I don't mention your name and it goes up past you, get back on. Scotty, what's the car you passed your driving test in? Believe it or not, it was the motoring school's car. It's a wonderful, wonderful motoring school. John S. Phillips Driving School in Greenock. And uh, Mr. Cuff was the driving instructor. Yes, Mr. Cuff, John Cuff. Lovely, lovely chap. And he, uh, got, me, um, to, uh, he got me through my test. And uh, it was a Ford Escort. So there you are. A Ford Escort, a little Escort. I think it was a Mark II Escort. Sandy Howden, if there's a yes sign again, George is dead in the water. Don't be silly, Sandy. I think you are a closet nationalist. I cannot believe you would betray your own country, Sandy. So that's what it was. Thank you, Scotty. It's lovely to see you, says Francis King. Of course, my first car was a 1952 Austin Somerset. Very, very swish. It was called Austerity Motoring. I think the Tories must have been around in these days as well. Well, the way our old Churchill was around. And Austerity Motoring, it was called. And it had a 1200cc engine, but a huge, big, bulbous body. Fabulous thing. A bit like myself. Mark Cruden's watching Dinky Doo. Julianne says she has just shared. Never passed my test, says Angie. I was told to get the sweary word out of the for, for Escort. XR3. Woo! That's a bit fast, Angie. You could have written that off. Scotty, trying to find information on a relative that was a prisoner of war at Dieppe. The MOD are trying to charge me £30 for five minutes' work on their computer. Ian, there might be some sort of charity that would, uh, would help out with that. Just check it out, um, you know, and you will get the information. The wonderful Dave Marshall is watching, one of the country's top broadcasters. And, of course, he wakened up the west of Scotland for about 30 years. So wonderful, wonderful stuff. Dave Marshall, dinky do to you. And as I say, I hope that uh, you are going from strength to strength. I hope that the um, wound is healing a little and that the scar is paling because you had that wonderful, wonderful man with you. Uh, so there we are. Uh, that's our Dave Marshall. We love him. Sandy, join the yes vote. It's only a matter of time, says George Mullen. He's quite right, actually. I mean, Scotland will gain independence, but we have to, you know, England, um, not England, because we love England. I've worked in England. It's nothing to do with not liking. But uh, I think that the, uh, the Conservative Party at Westminster need to actually grow up 
Um, that's what I would say. Grow up, guys. Uh, there's too much of the old uh, the old uh, schoolboy, the Bullingdon stuff going on there. Gaz Raleigh Jones is watching Dinky Doo. What do you think of Rangers? The narrow. You think they should get shot of... Uh, now, Mark, I, I, listen, everybody seems to be a football manager. Now, I've countered this in television and radio. Everyone's a programme controller. If I had a pound for every time somebody denigrated my show, I would be extremely wealthy. I would not be needing a GoFundMe account. So there you are. By the way, get on to GoFundMe, www.gofundme.com, and put in the Scotty McClue Show and stick in a fiver. Get your card out. Do it now while we're talking. Have you been in Lancashire recently? We miss you. We need the world's top broadcaster back in our tranny. Radio has gone to the dogs here in recent years, and we need you back as soon as possible. I don't understand a lot of radio these days because there's a rotation in a handful of songs. There's a lot of stuff put into a computer, and then it gets spewed out of your speakers. But in actual fact, where are the personalities? Where is the interaction with the area? What's the point in having a local radio station if you're not hearing all the locals phoning in to Scotty McClure? Dave Marshall holds the world record for the longest-running breakfast show on radio anywhere, I think, says Gordon Robertson. Fantastic, Gordon. We love it. What's your view on kids wearing slippers to school? It was in the paper last week, says... Steve Burrows. I, the slipper's an interesting one. It's, uh, it's soft shoes, the soft shoe shuffle. And I can remember when my father retired, the doctor said to him, Now, Archie, he said, don't put on your slippers in the morning. Put on your shoes. Tremendous. Colin Rogers watching. Dinky doo to you, Colin. Dave Marshall is a legend. I listened to him before I went to school. And after that, when I started my first job, that was only 45 years ago. Thank you, Dave, says George Mullen. I'm trying to think. I think Dave was one of the original Radio Clyders in 1973. Tremendous stuff. That station has always been brilliant. But I was chuffed to bits when somebody announced that the top brands in Scotland were Radio Clyde, Tunnock Scarmel Wavers and Scotty McClue. What about that? Uh, Ian Walker, there's a web page called Forces Reunited. There may be some info on there for you. If not, I may be able to point you in the right direction. Let me know, says Jim Jopling. Now, thanks very much for that, Jim. Now, Ian, also you can get on to... Uh, there's Forces Reunited, and then there's another one. There's War Records. So look that up as well. War Records. And if you can get his army number, uh, if he was an army man, then, uh, you know, you could be well on to something pretty sharpish. Um, DJ Locksmith, say hello from Scotty. He's shy, says Mark Nickel. Ah, DJ Locksmith. Fantastic. Uh, 19 people have just shared the video. Dinky doo to all of you. Share, 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 says Scotty McClue. Now, this week I've popped up twice very quickly. I popped up on Wednesday night to tell you all about the GoFundMe. If there are any doubting Thomases out there that think, why should I fund Scotty McClue? Why should I fund him? It's not just funding me. It's funding the program. We're getting bits and pieces together for the program, and we're looking at doing that. Tremendous. Scotty, what did you cover your school jottos with? I covered mine in linoleum, and I got a right belting when my dad seen the wee holes in the scullery floor. <laughs> Brilliant. You could put a bit of wallpaper, or if you are posh, brown paper. Brown paper on it, but a bit of we left over a bit of wallpaper. McClure, can we still have a pal, a shout out for my pal Hugh, please? Yes, Gordon, of course you can. And don't try that one on because I've been around for many years and I'm very long in the tooth. And I suspect you might be Hugh himself, Gordon. Ho <laughs> ho! There we go, touche! Uh, Penny Blacks, as we call the soft shoes, most schools are carpeted in classes now. It was a shiny wood floors in my day, says Angie. Yes, it was, Angie. And they smelt of pine disinfectant. Always remember that. A wee tune for the squeeze box, says Jim Stephen Gibb. And uh, Jim Jopping says, no problem, let me know, Ian. Alex Robertson's watching. One of our finest young actors. 
Tonics, Carmel Wafers, um, so there you go. Fantastic. And uh, Scotty, have you got a ship? If you had a ship, you could do a pirate radio station like the good old days, says Frank McConnell. Well, Frank, I don't think you can do a pirate radio station now because um, I would need to look up the Marine Offences Act. That's what put paid to uh, our lovely, lovely friends like Radio Caroline and uh, Radio Scotland. Do you remember? Radio Scotland's playing just for you. So beat the band and join the clan on Station 242. Fantastic. Used to listen to it on the wee Alba Tranny. Lovely little wee Alba Tranny with a, a brown leatherette case. I and the Janny Wee's bucket of wood shavings to mop up the sixes, Angie. I think the food wasn't so good in these days, Angie, and I think we gave it the... Wah! There we go. Our bodies were telling us otherwise. The soup dragons were telling us one thing, and our bodies told us another. Michael McGuigan, rugby players play with leather balls. So there you go. Hugh Miller is watching. Dinky do, Hugh. Who's this here? Appreciate it. Oh, yes. Fantastic. Uh, what about a second programme a week? I speak for a lot here. Once a week's not enough, says George Mullen. Well, funnily enough, I did 30 minutes on the GoFundMe just to get the Doubting Thomases sorted. And also, I did a Friday night special show. So you'll see that. I've got on my best bib and tucker. Careful how you say it. It was the butter beans, says Angie Thompson, that made the wee ones uh, shout on Hugh. Hugh! Um, that was right. Scotty, do you think people who climb hills in shorts and sannies in the winter should be fined for being rescued or just left behind? Leaving them behind would be harsh, Ian. Very, very harsh, of course. But I do think that people need to get a grip. And it's all very well when you hear of somebody who's sadly died on the mountains and the mountain rescue team have risked their lives to go out and get them off the mountain but uh, i think you know if they're not properly dressed for it uh you know it's but people have a sort of outdoor spirit they need to get out there jane mcdonald's watching the wonderful jane mcdonald absolute top lady uh, ian walker says captain pugwash lol well some of the ships i think wear old tubs I, you know i mean it's, it's very, very interesting. Have you ever seen the film The Boat That Rocked? That was excellent. The Boat That Rocked. And uh, Bill Nighy uh, plays um, the part of the owner. And, of course, what happened, a bit like Scotty McClue, people were queuing up to advertise on the pirate radio because everybody was listening. Massive figures. The Friday night show was an excellent treat, Scotty. Thanks, says John Paul Preston. Uh, what about insurance for all cyclists, says George Mullen. Yes, indeed. Vicky Navarro. Hi, Scotty. Me and my daughter, Mia, are listening to you. Can I say hello to her and three kisses from the lovely Vicky Navarro. Dinky-doo to you, Vicky. And thank you for everything you do for our wonderful, wonderful friend. And hi to Mia. It's Mia, isn't it? Have I got it right? Mia, I've not heard you mention the mumbling pants recently. Have they gone out of fashion, says Gordon Robertson. Yes, the ladies used to wear the mumbling pants. I shan't go into detail. I've got the CD, The Boat That Rocked, says Ian Walker. Yes, the DVD, I think you mean, Ian, because it was a film, of course. And um, I was watching War Horse the other day, another fabulous film. Of course, anything that Richard Curtis is involved in is always excellent excellent so if you're watching richard i say to you dinky do to you uh, have you seen strain train spotting two yet says mark nickel i haven't mark no but when i do i shall report back on it sit down you're rocking the boat scotty guys and dolls sorry i thought you were talking about me i was rocking the camera earlier can you wish the best of luck in a new job tomorrow, says Malcolm O'Currigan. And uh, he says, uh, yes, who am I wishing the best of luck? Paul V. Jones is watching, dinky-doo. And Scotty, what do you think of President Trump? What do you think he will do next? I'd love to see you interview him. Do you know, Paul Anthony, it's very funny you should say that. Because somebody said to me recently, before a world leader is appointed, they should have to pass muster 
with Scotty McClue. They should have to be interviewed with Scotty McClue because somebody said years ago, if a politician gets by Scotty McClue, he would have my vote. So there you are. But the television companies are very nervous of appointing me to do big interviews because they know that it will just be massive and that every squeak and every breath and every pause will be noticed by the world. That's how Scotty McClue does interviews. We get there. Nothing aggressive. We just get to the old nitty-gritty. We explore every nook and cranny, and in some cases, every crook and nanny. Right, well, microchipped, says Gordon Robertson. Good for you. Do you think men should get their wives microchipped? Now, this is excellent. Who's asked that? That's a very good question. Yes, Gordon. Gordon Robertson, do we think men should get their wives microchipped? I'll tell you something I came up with years ago was the old Wi-Fi pants. And if the pants had moved in an unnatural way, the uh, husband got a text. So there you go. There's a thought for you. It would stop wives going astray. Yes, of course. And uh, But you could... Put the tracker on and say, oh, there she is. She said she's going to the theatre with her pal. She's in the theatre and there's her pal as well. Scotty, say hello to Geraldine MacDonald who's just tuned in. She's from Housel Wood and I know she loves you, says Paul Anthony. Dink you do and we love Housewell Wood as well. Wonderful part of the world. Great place to grow up. In Train Spotting 3, the Vulgar Dimension, can't remember anything. It's a 20-minute film, says Ian Walker. Mark Nichols says, LOL, absolutely fantastic. Great bit of uh, Facebook textbook language there. Dinky-doo. Uh, what's the time? It's time we had a share, I think. We're very time for oh, for goodness sake, we're well past our share. We should be into our second share by now. Can everybody share, 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 share their videos right now? And please, I beg of you, get typing on Facebook. Type, 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 see. Is everybody watching Scotty McClue Live? Is the world watching? Very, very important. Uh, Scotty, uh, have you seen the old film about the Clyde Puffer? It's called The Maggie. Yes, of course. I remember uh, being in Ardrishig. I lived in Ardrishig when I was young. And uh, I used to go and board the puffers. I knew them very, very well. The skippers would take me on. They would put the engine just ahead, just a, just a turn or two of the prop and uh, steer her into the side and say, take the way full our board and bring her up to the wheelhouse. They were marvellous. They were wonderful, wonderful people. The puffer men. Of course, very, very hard working. There's still a puffer running the Vic 32. Nick and Rachel, I've got the Vic 32 at Crinan. Say hello to Mary Smith, says Paul. Absolutely. Microchip the wife. Too funny, says Robert Riley Dad Senior. <laughs> a lot of people wouldn't mind if the wife was out there, but microchipping themselves. And mind you, the men might get microchipped when they go out to the pub. Has anybody here ever used the excuse when they've got back in? Have you noticed? I mean, women are funny, you know, in so many ways. They can spot a blonde hair in your collar across a dark room at three o'clock in the morning. But some of them can't see a garage door with full headlights on. You know, it's very, very strange. But uh, also, have you noticed that if you creep in, if you're very, very late, if it's one of these nights when you've met a man you hadn't seen for 40 years, and you creep in, and you creep in, and you creep in, you don't make a sound, and you play for time getting your duddies off, and all the rest of it. And then the wife goes, what do you think you're doing? She's bolt upright with the light on in seconds. If you go in and you slam the door and you jump up the stairs two at a time, you make yourself a cup of tea, you go and you have a wee belch and maybe another one as well. And then, uh, you know, you go in, you put the bedroom light on. You go, oh, for goodness sake. You take a long time to get your duddies off and then you jump into bed. And all you hear is... <clears throat> right, so there you go. I don't know. Maybe I've just imagined that. Maybe that doesn't go on. Wi-Fi pants, says Gordon Robertson. Excellent. Uh, I have abated, says Paul. Right, excellent, good, good stuff, pleased to hear it. Uh, we've got to get the government to support the air ambulance more, says Steve Burrows. The air ambulance should not need support. It should be run by the government. 
Definitely. I mean, I don't mind paying a bit of extra tax for the air ambulance. I'll tell you that right now. Talking of DOSH, can every single one of you please go to GoFundMe.com, www.GoFundMe.com, put in the Scotty McClue show and stick in a few quid. That would be marvellous if you could, just to get the ball rolling. Just think, Scotty McClure has been with us now for 25 years. He's done 36,000 hours of unscripted live broadcasting. He's delivered it to my home. He's been on the telly. He's been in the newspapers. He's now live on Facebook Live internationally and globally. Uh, he's certainly worth a quid and perhaps even a fiver. Uh, some people have been incredibly generous. So there we are. You will notice we've set the bar very high. We've set the bar at five million pounds. This is because, I could tell you a little bit about it, if any media assets come up which are appropriate for purchase, old McClure would be on the sniff. Sniff, 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 sniff. Can I smell a radio station? Can I smell a radio station going cheap? Um, Ron Stewart says shared, Scotty. Yes, says Peter Ewing. Absolutely no problem at all. Would you all be happy to contribute towards the air ambulance? A tiny little bit more tax for the air ambulance. Would you be happy to do that, guys? Tell me what you think. Is it better when McClue sits back? Do you prefer that? Is that less in your face, as they say? The only problem is I can't see anything that's going up in front of me. Steve Burrows, yes, we've got to get the government to support the air ambulance more. Absolutely, I could not agree more. Here we go again. So we're on the move up the way. Uh, Scotty, how many inches are in the Clyde? Are you talking about, uh, where, whereabouts in the Clyde are you actually talking? Um, because it's incredible. I don't know if you've ever been to Inverness. If you go to Inverness and you take a look over at the, uh, at the old Ness, flowing through there. Inverness, big clue. You have a look at the nest there, and sometimes if you go in high summer, it's uh, it's very, very shallow. Very, very shallow. Uh, so there you are. And of course, I stayed overlooking the Kelvin for many, many years, and it was quite shallow as well. But it was a lovely, lovely wee river. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, nice name check for me, Scotty, says Geraldine MacDonald. Absolutely, Geraldine. Scotty, you get an app called Find My Phone. Chip the wife, you could get one called Find My Wife. I might actually develop it myself. Find the wife. Esther Hart. Not everybody wants to find the wife, though. I mean, I haven't spoken to my wife for 32 years. Now, it's not that I don't love her. It's just I don't want to interrupt her. Uh, so there you go. The police stopped me one time. They said, realize when you were round that roundabout, your wife fell out. I said, thank goodness, officer. I thought I'd gone deaf. Right, uh, White Inch says Gordon Robertson. The mountain climbers should have to get insurance to pay for their rescues. What do you think, Scotty? It's the same as road users, says Esther Hart. You know, Esther, there's something in that, but we don't really want to officialise everything. Have you noticed that the powers that be start sniffing round if they think there's money? If you've ever tried to start a business, the second you get the phone connected, it goes bananas. And it's nothing of interest to you. It's salespeople trying to flog your business stuff. Hello, do you like a fax? Hello, we can do you all these mobile phones. Um, all that nonsense. So there you go. What was it about White Inch? What were you telling me about White Inch? Jim Clark's watching. Mark Nickel, I've shared. So there. What's the best film to be made in Scotland, Scotty? Oh, gosh. The very best film to be made in Scotland. I think if you ask me honestly, it was uh, Bill Forsyth's Local Hero. I loved Local Hero. I loved Gregory's Girl. I loved Chick Murray at the piano. And I've actually done that myself. When I was a schoolmaster, I was playing the piano and we once come round the door to listen to you. And I loved when the late, wonderful, great, great man, Chick Murray, was doing a wee ditty he'd made up himself and the wee ones were at the door and he turned round and he said in his best schoolmaster voice go away small boys <laughs> fantastic p.s where's your fancy dapper tonight scotty kiss kiss 
says Heather Carr. I shall tell you, kiss kiss, my aubergine bow tie. Big argument last night with a lady about the colour of the bow tie. Because there's burgundy in the jacket. She said the bow tie is burgundy. And I say the bow tie is aubergine. But who is right? See if you can search out Friday night's programme and tell me. I'm in my best bib and tucker. Careful. Uh, Scotty, I'm trying to Skype you, but it's not working. It should be. The Skype is up and running. Are we arranged? Skype online? Yes, Scotty McClue is online, so there's nothing to stop you Skyping me this end. So if you want to Skype, 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 Skype now, I say. Uh, Scotty, um, what's Stuart saying here? Hold on. Stuart McLennan's watching Dinky Doo, Stuart. Many, many congratulations on passing your Toastmasters exam. You're now a member of the Scottish Toastmasters, and that is absolutely fantastic. You looked super in your Toastmasters uniform with your, your red coat and your white gloves. Toastmastering. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence. For the father of the bride, <laughs> I used to uh, I used to not with a man, but with my pals at three a.m. would turn all the clocks back so my mummy wouldn't catch us. Says Angie Thompson. What I loved about mums in these days, you could you're in, you made a racket, and it was quite clearly you or your pals were with you, and um, your mother shouted, "Hello, is that you?" No, no, no. It's a burglar, ma. Uh, all that kind of nonsense. Wonderful stuff. Best Welsh film, Twin Towns, says Julie Ann Scott. Twin Towns. Julie Ann, um, what's the film when you had the wonderful Ivor Emmanuel singing? He sang, obviously, in Zulu. He sang Men of Harlech. Men of Harlech, stand ye steady. Wonderful stuff. No sound again, says Jane MacDonald. You should have sound, Jane. There shouldn't be a problem with that. So perhaps it's something that's tripped out on the machine. Scotty, I've watched just a boys game. Greenock looked better in the 70s. Well, of course Greenock looked better in the 70s because there was so much money. In the 70s, Greenock had about 75,000 people living in it. And I think it's, ha it's got about 20, 25,000 less now. And I have so much love and fondness and affection for Greenock. I want to make it the financial capital of the world. Planes coming in. Fantastic. To, uh, to Abbot Singe um, or HMAS Sanderling. Uh, all that sort of stuff. And, uh, and, and what have you. Um, Scotty. I've watched, oh yes, David Jimison. David Jimison's watching Dinky Doo Doo. Just a Boys Game was uh, a wonderful television drama on BBC in the 1970s and 80s. Uh, you'd, that, you'd also got Down Where the Buffalo Go. And um, what else did we have? Just Another Saturday about the, um, the uh, Catholics and Protestants and Orange Walks and things like that in Glasgow, just another Saturday. I think Billy Billy was in that, wasn't he? Billy Connolly was in that. Uh, I would pay extra for the air ambulance of Steve Burroughs, no problem at all. Good evening, Mr. M, says Alan Mack. Good evening to you. Uh, that's Mr. Christian Gray from Fifty Shades of Grey. There's a lot to answer for. He's messed up my sex life, says Ronnie McPhee. Ronnie, I'm sure you'll get back on track. No problem at all. So there you go. If you're Skyping in, it's Scotty Dr. McClue. Nobody's Skyped uh, at the moment. And I can see I've got the Skype in front of me, Frank. So there's no problem with that. And uh, also, comments coming through, but live is stalling, says Robert Riley Dowd Sr. I think if you get a lot of people on, uh, sometimes the signal goes a bit bananas. Dinky doo, Scotty McClue, getting political here. Now, you're not getting political at all. Which football? What's that? What's that? What's that? It'll come up. Ring of Bright Water's a lovely film, says Angie Thompson. Of course, the Gavin Maxwell story about the, the little otter. What was the name of the otter? Midge. Midge. 
And I love when he's in London before he goes up to the north of Scotland that night on the sleeper train. And uh, Midge is in the bath in the flat in London. Scotty, you're the legend, says Frank Cuffin. Crank Cuffin, I beg your pardon. I beg your, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I've got somebody else's teeth in tonight. Hold on a second. Oh. <laughs> See, bitter, gumpty, gumpty, gumpty. Uh, there we are, Scotty. I've shared your page to over 100 people. I'd like a 20% share in McClure Enterprises, please. Paul, for that, I'll allow you to go to GoFundMe and donate to Scotty McClure. That'll be a pound, please. Uh, but that's not the taxpayer that pays for the rescues, says Esther Hart. No, no, I think there's a lot to do with charity. Evening, Scotty. I've just realised you were on. I hope all is good. Absolutely. Sorry, Scotty. Just ordering a curry for the Allies in Shettleston. A good mention for Ali on here. Congratulations on your 20th Facebook live show, Scotty, my friend, says Francis King. Francis, that is very, very touching and very humbling. I so love my Facebook friends. Tremendous. And of course, you come alive. Tell me about it, Scotty. HM Revenue and Customs, the bin of my life, says Frank McConnell. Do you know, when um, I started a radio station in the old Players Factory, the Players Cigarette Factory um, in uh, Stirling, and uh, I can remember um, there was still tobacco dust on some of the beams. It was wonderful. Uh, the old Enterprise, it's now the Enterprise Centre. And uh, that was the John Player factory. And uh, I remember one of the employees telling me that the van used to turn up to collect the duty on the fags at lunchtime. Uh, fantastic. Whiskey Galore, a great Scottish film. Says Ronnie McPhee. Oh, yes. I mean, there's been so many. I love Whiskey Galore. Duncan McRae in it. Gordon Jackson in it. Of course, tremendous. Ah, hi. The some religions has their advantage. Right enough. Uh, there we go. Please, no Skype, says George Mullen. George, some people are begging me for Skype. Scotty, get the calls going. It used to be great when the calls were going. Get the calls going. And you're going, no, 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 no Skype. Please, no Skype. I beg you, no Skype. Uh, Ring of Bright Water is an old but lovely film, says Angie Thompson. <coughs> Angie, steady on. It's not that old. McClure saw it in the pictures when it came out. So steady, steady. Also remember Sound of Music. All you could hear was people greeting their eyes out. The Sound of Music, it was huge. It was wonderful. You had to go to Glasgow to see it. I'm trying to give up smoking just now. Costs far too much. I can help you with that and get Alan Carr's book, How to Stop Smoking. Read it twice. What for McClure? And I haven't smoked now either a pipe or a cigar or a cigarette for, and I can tell you exactly, 19 years, I think I would say, 19 years. McClure. And I've never even ever been tempted in the days when I liked a refreshment and it was late at night in the pub in the days when you could smoke in the pub and someone says, oh, hey, 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 a fag if you want one, Scott. Hey, fag if no. No problem, son. Very well, there's plenty there. I uh, know. So I have the cigarettes if you're wonderful. But no, 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 no. Not even tempted. So there you go. Wonderful. Scotty, Bill Forsyth deserves a knighthood for his work. I'm glad you and I agree on something, Gordon. You and I agree on everything. It's just I'm quite refined and you're a wee bit coarse. All right, Sean Finley's watching. What's your favourite film, Scotty? My favourite film of all time. I do love The Sound of Music. I'm in love with War Horse. I loved Notting Hill. Anything that Richard Curtis is involved in making is a fabulous piece of work. Anything that David Attenborough is involved in, anything that David Lean is involved in. I was talking to a friend of mine the other night about um, Ryan's daughter. Uh, John Mills playing the so-called village idiot. It wouldn't be politically correct now, but he was so-called village idiot. Trevor Howard as the priest. Uh, I mean, just wonderful. Um, and uh, Sarah, um, Sarah's, Sarah's second name as, as the, the, the lead role. Um, Robert Mitchum was in it as well. 
wonderful stuff. Uh, so there you go, my favourite film. Very, very difficult to say. As I say, all for different reasons. I love them for different reasons. I love the fun of Gregory's Girl and Local Hero. I love the fun of all that. I love old movies as well. Sometimes you'll see an old black and white movie. I loved um, the early 39 Steps, the Hitchcock one with Robert Donat. It was wonderful. So there you go. Uh, right. Um, yes. Yeah, so, Gordon, you and I agree on quite a lot. How are you on pipe tunes, Gordon? Are you any good at Glencala Castle? What about my own march pass, the Glenderool Highlanders? There you go. Um, Louise Sullivan says, Hi, Scotty. Hi, Louise. Dinky do to you. I hope you're well. Adam M. Fuller, the sound is fine, says Adam. Zulu is an amazing film. They have a museum in Brecon about the uprising, says Julie. And Scott, of course. And um, I'm just thinking of uh, Under Milkwood Dylan Thomas. Uh, should Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees be knighted? There's a guy getting knighted for doing a lot less. So there you are. Um, yes, well, I, I mean, you know, there's so many people could be knighted. But I was trying to explain to somebody how the honours system came about. And the honours system was a wonderful idea. At that time, there was still the British Empire. And um, because before that, you'd you'd um, things like the Royal Victorian Chain, uh, you'd things like that. You'd got the um, what else have we got? There was the Star of India. Um, so there was what else did we have? I'm just trying the South African Star. Um, there were a lot of old honours, and then they thought, let's open this up because it will bring the people and the palace together. So it was George the Fifth. I think if I remember right, they brought in the Order of the British Empire. And uh, a good one's a KBE, a Knight of the British Empire. And of course, you've got the OBE, the officer that uh, my Uncle Bob got for um, circumnavigating the world seven times as a captain. How about that? Hello, Scotty McClue, says Richard Bonnet in Vancouver in Canada. It made me laugh because that guy was on and goes, Ha! McLean's telling everybody is global. And of course, bang, on come people from Australia and from Canada and from America and from Madagascar. It's wonderful. So there we are. So yes, I once got asked recently, somebody said to me, and they were quite serious about it, they said, Scotty, do you, miss, if you'd gone down the news line, the straight line, there's no doubt you would have been knighted by now. Do you miss that? Do you regret that? And I said, no, because I see so many people with knighthoods and lordships and things like that. I know many of them personally, and some of them are absolute grumps. They're so unhappy. You know, at least McClue is a happy man. So there you are. Work-life balance. That's what it's all about. But uh, I also think of Bond's words come to me. You know, see yon belted knight, you know, he's but a coof for all that. You know, the man who independent mind lives and laughs at all that. A man's a man for all that. So there you are. The rank is but the guinea stamp. The man's the goud, the gold for all that. And if you go to Iona, you'll see my mother's friend, the late John Smith, leader of the Labour Party, leader of the opposition. And you'll see uh, John, uh, his, uh, his, his flat gravestone amongst all the kings of Scotland on Iona there, and just along from a very, very dear friend of mine, um, the Reverend Cameron Wallace, M A M B E, M B E M A, M A M B E, and um, the you know John's there in Iona, and he was an honest man, a marvellous man. My mother taught him in the Sunday school to sing the little rabbit song that he used to sing on the plane to all the uh, the politicians when they came home on a Friday. Um, should Barry, yes, we've done that one. Uh, Louise Sullivan says, hope you're well. Absolutely, Louise. And we'll do that little uh, thing you were talking about, Louise. That would be absolutely fine. Uh, Scotty, you've got pics of you as a wane. Are there any in your waterproofs and wellies? Sun splitting the trees. Every pic of us wanes. The sun is shining. You had to have the sun shining. Because if it was the old box brownie, you can have shaded it 
and you had to expose the foam for a while and let it settle and then my mother got an up-to-date camera she got a brownie 127 fantastic and you handed your uh, film you had to watch there was no light when you were loading the film so you had to go in the dark you get somebody to put their jacket over your head and say i'm loading a film and then when you took the film out of the camera you had to make sure <laughs> You had to make sure it was dark and you didn't expose the film to sunlight. And then you took the film into the chemist and he charged you three and sixpence and you got all your prints back, most of them without uh, heads and feet and arms and all the rest of it. Quite funny. Scotty, I think my father wanted rid of me when I was a wean. Every year at Christmas he would give me an adventure kit, maps, binoculars, compass and a spyglass. Well, I don't know. I was talking to somebody who said his father used to go, why don't you go down in the beach and play with the shells? And of course, there was a munition dump just beside them. Scotty, don't you think social media and all these computers such like it is are taking away the power of speech and writing nowadays, especially at Christmas time, when we were younger, we couldn't wait to go. We couldn't wait to get out. Nowadays, kids are getting lazy, wanting to be glued to bits of plastic. Yes, I do have a slight worry, because if we're not careful, what will happen, Sean, is we'll lose our far sight. We'll only be able to see as far as you and I are looking right now. Oh, we don't want that. Um, Scotty, you're going to accept my Skype request, please, says Gordon. You're so good. I want you on Skype and on the Facebook. Where is it, Gordon? I'm looking right now for... Are you in as, who are you in as, Gordon R? There you go. Right, Gordon. That's you accepted now, so you can call in. Heather Carr says, Dinky Doo McClue, you're getting political here. Which fo football team do you support? I'm a Berwick Ranger. Lol. So there you are. Well, I went to see the Morton play one day. I wasn't quite sure how to get to Capolo, and I said to the policeman, How do I get to Capolo, my good sir? And he said, If you just follow the crowd, sir, you'll be fine. Ended up Morrison. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so that's me. Malcolm O'Hor against watching. Ah, camera how? Malcolm, ha, camera. Koshin, Koshin, Shaw, 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 Malcolm. Did you just say fart? Says Angie Thompson. No, Angie, I did not say fart. Well, I said fart there, but that was just denying that I'd said fart. So I certainly would not be saying fart on a program. Comments are working here okay, Scotty, says George. There you go, Scotty. We're waiting all week, and it's all over in no time. Yes, we haven't got long to go. Now, I promised James Stephen Gibb a tune on the box. Shall I see if we can get a tune going on the box? Wait till we see. for you and a excellent stuff a tune from the squeeze box for jim stephen gibb i cannot believe how fast the time has gone tonight my dear friend friends my dear folks wonderful stuff oh no not the box says somebody <laughs> fantastic the skype says you haven't shared your details with me scotty either my quantum computer or yours is acting up yes there you go and uh, say hello oh my goodness an hour's not long enough scotty any chance of going longer says steve neil james mills is watching so scotty uh, were you a record player in players uh, lol scotty i want to be a beric ranger i'll only live for sex and danger says heather i want to be a beric ranger i'll only live for sex and danger i take it that's one of beric's chants i don't know what was the other one say hello to nigel and sue kenny from east lancashire will you scotty they're pals of mine they're millionaires so i hope they'll donate to your show yes to my gofundme.com the scotty mcclue show and uh, also an hour's not long enough scotty i'm trying to gear up the smoking and we've done that one um so there we are i can remember the john player factory in stirling yes it's the step enterprise center now 
Suraj Shatterjee, Scotty, hello Suraj, Brian Gillen's watching a fine fella dinky do. Neil James Mills says, McClure, you bam bam. Oh, harsh, harsh but fair. Uh, hi Scotty, says Margaret Bonar. Well done on the smoking, Algen. Comfort and Joy, one of the best Scotland films. Gregory's Girl as well, says Mark. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, Elliot, says Suraj. Absolutely, you two. Stop the nonsense now. Oi, Bam Bam, says Neil James Mills. Hello, Neil James. Neil Chipping is watching. Neil Chipping, a very fine fellow indeed. One of the finest wizards of the big switchboard that Scotty McClure ever had. Tremendous stuff. Uh, I smoke 120, and he's mentioned the cigarettes a day. I love it, says Frank McConnell. Give it up, Frank, or they'll be giving you up. Hi, Scotty, just a coincidence that you stop smoking the same time as uh, they stop the cigarette coupons. <laughs> I think there was one cigarette company, if you saved enough coupons, you could actually purchase uh, a Rolls Royce, but you'd be in an awful state. You wouldn't be fit to drive it. Uh, David Attenborough, Planet Earth, was awesome to watch before Christmas, says Sean Finlay. I love David Attenborough. I love the man. He's fabulous. I love when he goes, Out in this very, very bleak tundra, there is only one person afoot, the Arctic fox. Oh, did you like Kez? That was a classic. Yes, Kez was wonderful as well. There's been so many great films. It's incredible. Have you ever not known what you're watching? You just sit down and watch and you think, this is brilliant. And of course, I love my Bond films. Um, I was saying to somebody the other night, I think I would make quite a good M in, uh, in Bond. And I also think I'd make an excellent Doctor Who. Go and check out Friday Night Show with the bow tie on. The Doctor with the big eyes. So there we go. Ooh. Fantastic. There's room in the TARDIS for us all, I say. I've been listening to your old broadcasts on YouTube. My favourite was the Hooligans. Or Katie. She's thick. I was laughing my head off all afternoon. What a good laugh. You're a legend, my friend. Happy. What's it saying? Happy. Can't see it's going on. Happy. 25th anniversary. Yes. This is Scotty McClue's Silver Jubilee. The 25th anniversary. And we're hoping to raise a lot of money. So can every single one of you get on to GoFundMe and stick in a pound and a fiver? Do you know, if everyone in Scotland gave a pound the now, the new, we would reach our target right away tonight. What about that? So there you are. Everyone in Scotland, if you gave a pound, Scotty McClure would reach his target tonight. If everybody in the country gave a fiver, we'd reach our target and exceed it. Uh, Scotty would be a good name for an Andy Murray film. Um, I think Stop Making a Racket. <laughs> I actually, I won't say, but I have an actor in mind to play Andy Murray. I think he would be superb. Uh, but I better not say who it is. Uh, Dylan Thomas was a Swansea boy. Oh, says Julianne Scott. Ah, Nosta, Julianne. Gregor G. I love Bill Forsyth, especially Gregory's girl. I was heartbroken when they knocked down Abram Hill High School. Disgraceful. Uh, the Greedy Council. Big mistake. D. Hepburn, a great loss to the world of acting. Where did she end up? Uh, says George Mullen. They went uphill and came down a mountain. Is a good film. So there we are, or uh, Judy in the Sky with Tennis. No, we're not going there. Neil Wood, Father John. Yes, yes, indeed. And um, Father John, Father John McMillan of Barra. He, you don't know, he, no way. Uh, gosh, you'll need to start me off on that one. Tremendous. Great fiddle player and harpist there, Neil Wood. Wonderful man. Uh, I watched School for Scoundrels, the old black and white film the other day. Terry Thomas, Alistair Sim, and uh, Ian... Was it Ian? I can't mind, but I'm sure you will know. Who was in that school for scandal? Was it Ian Carmichael? Wonder. Another great show, Scotty. An hour is not long enough. It's time to push off. I love Warhorse, Scotty. We could go on all night, but I have to go. Thank you so much to all of you. Spend the week funding me, please. Go to GoFundMe, and the links are all up on Scotty's Facebook. You cannot go wrong, but please do it. Get your card out and give us a quid or a fiver. 
and let's get that fun rolling. Now, if you want to find out all about it, click, you'll see me in a blue jumper and a blue shirt, and I will be telling you all about it there, so you'll see what's happening. Have a wonderful week, my dear friends. Look after yourselves, and thank you so much for joining me tonight. It has been a superb show, albeit very, very fast indeed. This is Scotty McClure saying to you, dinky-doo, goodbye everybody, goodbye. Take care everybody as you go. Goodbye everybody of Wittorzain. Au revoir and a cheerio. Cheerio loves, dinky-doo, Scotty McClure has left the building.